The MacBooks Air and Pro with M1 have proven to be very capable laptops despite a couple of issues here and there. I'm sure a lot of people would like to be able to hook these up and run them in a desktop mode, and that's where these CalDigit docks come in handy. Hey, I'm Jerry, and yes, I love my MacBook Pro M1. It's a very capable machine for 95% of what I need a laptop to do today. It's fast for regular web surfing, watching video, for logging into work servers, and you can even edit video on it with some caveats. I wanna be able to use this device for everything, including with a big screen and an external keyboard and additional ports. So CalDigit sent me a couple of these docks to try out with the new MacBooks with M1. A quick disclaimer here, CalDigit has not paid me for this review, and no one has reviewed or had any input on this video before my posting it. So the first dock is this USB-C Soho dock. This is a nice compact dock with a good selection of ports on the front and back for most people. It connects via USB-C to one of the only two USB-C ports on the MacBook with M1, and the cable is not permanently attached to the dock, which is nice. On the front, you get the option of fast SD or micro SD, UHS-2 ports, and 10 gigabit per second USB-C and USB-A ports, which I don't even think I knew that you could get 10 gigabit per second through USB-A, so that's kind of cool. On the back, you have a USB-C input for power up to 100 watts, an HDMI 2B port, and a DisplayPort 1.4. Both of these ports can do 60 hertz output to a display, but more on that in a minute. Using the included USB-C cable, we plug it into the side for USB input, and then we can plug it into the side of the MacBook right there. Perfect. Let's get our monitor plugged in with DisplayPort and give it one second. Okay, so we're up and running. And one of the first things that I wanted to test is disk speed and SD card speed through this hub. So let's plug one in. And, and you know what? I just gotta say, I don't know if you can hear this. It's a really nice, satisfying click for, you know, it doesn't matter, but it feels nice. So using the SanDisk Extreme Pro SD card with a maximum read speed of 170 megabytes per second, I'm able to get read speeds of about 160 megabytes per second through the CalDigit USB-C Soho Hub, which is fantastic because usually the slowest part, the biggest bottleneck of my workflow when making videos is just copying and importing footage from the SD cards. On my iMac, I can get around 90 megabytes per second. And you might not think that that matters, but that's just time when I'm twirling my thumbs and waiting. And to have it be this fast is actually pretty helpful. I also have this one terabyte Samsung T7 SSD, which I usually edit off of with the iMac. If we connect this to the USB port on the front of the hub, the Soho hub, and we'll bring up the Blackmagic test and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so as you can see, we're not getting the highest speed available for this drive. We're peaking around 610 megabytes per second write and around 550 to 560 for read. Now I do wanna say that based on my previous tests, the USB-C speed on these M1 MacBooks are not as fast as the Intel MacBook Air I have or my 2020 iMac, which can get nearly the max speed at about one gigabyte per second. But these speeds that I'm getting through this hub is more than fast enough for almost any workflow, including video editing. On the back of the Soho Hub, we are connected with DisplayPort and we're currently running scaled at 3K and 60 Hertz. I wanna point that out because on my last video, I connected to a BenQ monitor using these docks and I was limited to 30 Hertz. I reached out to CalDigit and they confirmed that the dock does work at 60 Hertz with the M1 Max. I also reached out to BenQ and they confirmed that there are some issues between the M1 Max and the BenQ displays using Thunderbolt and DisplayPort and they're looking into it. So because of that issue, I went out and bought this Samsung monitor to test and we are indeed connected at 60 Hertz. The display looks great and I don't see any lag. If I play a video on the screen, you can see that it looks just fine. CalDigit says that you can use this dock, this Soho dock with two external monitors and those configurations depend on resolution, refresh rate and operating system. With the M1 MacBooks, you are limited to just one external display and that limitation comes from Apple. So if you wanna use the CalDigit Soho dock with multiple displays, you can do so, but make sure your setup meets the requirements. Also on the back is the USB-C power connection, which can do pass-through charging of up to 100 watts of power. I have the Apple supplied MacBook Pro adapter, which I believe is 60 watts, and it's been charging through this dock without any issue. There are a couple of great things about this CalDigit Soho dock. First, it's tiny. You can use this dock on your desk without taking out much space, and just as easily toss it in your bag for work or travel. Second, this includes the ports that I need most, including both SD and micro SD, 
and USB-C and USB-A. I can pretty much do everything that I need with these specific ports and it helps that they're up to 10 gigabits per second. Third, this thing can be bus powered, as you can see here, negating the need for an external charger during meetings or short bursts of productivity, making this a nearly perfect all around dock for the MacBook Pro M1. There are just two things I wish the Soho dock did include though, an ethernet port and a rear audio jack. If I'm using this at a desk, I will probably want a decent set of external speakers to go with this MacBook instead of connecting the speakers to the MacBook. I would rather have that on the back of the dock. If you're in a market for a dock though that has a few more ports and options, then maybe the older, bigger brother of the Soho dock will work better for you. This is the CalDigit TS3 Plus dock. It is a bigger, beefier dock that has Thunderbolt, more port options, but does fall behind the Soho dock in just a couple of ways. First off on the TS3 Plus dock, we can see that on the front there's a single SD card slot, headphone out, audio in, and USB-C and USB-A 5 gigabits per second. On the back side, we get five more five gigabit per second USB-A ports, a 10 gigabit USB-C port, Thunderbolt in and out, display port, optical audio out, one gigabit ethernet, and a power port providing up to 87 watts of power for your laptop. Yes, the TS3 Plus has a power supply included in the box to provide power for the dock and for your laptop. The Soho Hub comes with USB-C cable. The TS3 Plus comes with a Thunderbolt cable. Add display port and power and wait for the screen to come on. Great, there we go. All right, so I wanted to do the same test with the SD card and the Samsung T7. And just like on the Soho Hub, the feeling of the SD card mechanism is pretty good. And we'll plug the Samsung drive to the 10 gigabit port on the back. So with the Samsung T7 SSD connected to the TS3 Plus dock using Thunderbolt to the Mac, we're getting about the same write speeds, about 610, 618. But for read speeds, we're actually getting a little bit better at around 627, 630. So about 80 megabytes per second faster going through the TS3 Plus dock than with the Soho dock. Unfortunately, the SD card read speeds on the TS3 is slower than the Soho dock, getting around 90 megabytes per second compared to the approximately 160 we were getting on the Soho. The great things about the TS3 Plus dock are first, the front audio ports on the TS3 Plus will make it easier for connecting headphones or a microphone when docked at a desk. In my limited testing, I found no distortion or delay when connected to the audio connection on the front using headphones. Second, there are many more USB ports on the TS3 compared to the Soho. So if you have a different mouse with an RF receiver, you can always leave that connected to the dock and still have plenty of room for USB drives or other peripherals. Third, having ethernet for a fast, stable connection will always be preferred to Wi-Fi, whether you're gaming or uploading large files. And fourth, the included power supply means you don't need to worry about taking your laptop charger out of your bag each time you connect, and that will lessen the amount of times that I definitely forget my charger when I leave. Two things that I think are missing from the TS3 dock, in my opinion, are a micro SD card on the front and a rear audio out for connecting speakers that's not optical audio out because I'm just not going to be using speakers that have optical audio in. So I think that both of these docks are great and have different use cases. If you want a dock that has a few more ports and has the ability to travel with you and your M1 MacBook, then the CalDigit USB-C Soho dock is a great option. If you're more of a power user and you need additional ports for peripherals and a stable ethernet connection, the TS3 Plus dock will be another great option. But what do you think? Which of these two docks would work best for you and your M1 MacBook? Is there a better dock out there that I should be looking at? I would love to be able to Frankenstein these two docks together to have something the size of the Soho that adds ethernet and an audio out jack on the back. I think my dock of choice right now for the MacBook Pro M1 will be the USB-C Soho dock because it works well with my HDMI on my beautiful BenQ monitor and provides most of what I need. But if BenQ and Apple can resolve their differences, I would probably switch to the TS3 Plus and use DisplayPort and be happier with the extra ports. If you've been looking at the MacBooks with M1, but you're having trouble deciding which one to get, you should definitely check out this video right over here or look in the description for my M1 playlist. Hit the like button if you did, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.